morning. Why are we discussing this again? Is this your first time listening to the podcast, Epic Pikachu? It's been 10 episodes. I need to start recycling the same material. <laughs> no, thank you, Falco. No, Lily, let's not ban Falco. Herbert! Herbert, about a year ago, there was a team in Low Inc. called the Herbert Fan Club, and I thought they were referring to you. Um, unfortunately, it turns out the Herbert they were referring to was the name of a rat that uh, they accidentally ran over on the road, and it was just like in honor of that dead rat. Um, so no, it wasn't a tribute to you, it was a tribute to Roadkill. Uh, they they did pretty good. They finished like top eight in that low ink, but it wasn't for you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I uh, ran into Saint K in um in an, um in a series like a week or so ago, actually. I did. I think we kicked some butt until we lost enough to where I had to leave. I got the three three L's and you can't you you're forced to play a new teammate. <laughs> you waved? I think we squid bagged each other. <laughs> no, no, we did hold on. I got the I got the clip actually. <laughs> we squid bagged each other and one of our teammates turned around to look at us like, what the hell are y'all doing? We're trying to play a game here, and we ended up winning. Where did I... I don't know if I can... I don't think I got a setup to show it here. I might just grab my camera and show it straight up. Yeah, I'll just do that because this is honestly kind of funny. So <laughs> there's me and not Herbert, but Sherbert and St. K playing this match. We load up and I see St. K. And whenever I see somebody I know and isn't annoyed by, I'll actually squid bag. This is like a little friendly thing here. So this happened. Yeah, we're, we're partying. We're like saying hi to each other. And then I think it's this, uh, yeah, this, this, this slosher player turns back and looks at us. Like, are you guys going to play with us or not? Like, what's going on right here? So to star music note, I'm sorry. That wasn't anything disrespectful for you. We were just playing. So, so now, okay, so now who's throwing? Me and St. K are going to play and you're just back there staring at us. So, there you go. <laughs> 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 
No, you. is here. You're missing your ditching Stardew to listen to a dude entering his mid-30s talking about a competitive Splatoon. I mean, you do you. Appreciate you. Whatever it is you're doing right now. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Thanks for stopping by anyways, Herbert. Enjoy your dinner. this is from. Who in chat knows where this is from? <clears throat> so, your, as in my your, going to ban shot and pencil from low ink, right? Sure. Sure, why not? I think we'd probably be better off banning arrow spray, honestly. We need to ban the bad weapons from Low Ink to teach you guys to stop playing the bad weapons. Like the low tiers. If we can get the low tiers out of Low Ink, I think we'd do more good than anything. God bless our day one commentators of Low Ink. <laughs> they just have to be like, uh, what? <laughs> How do I break down the gameplay of this weapon? I forgot it was in the game. Good morning, Gus. Get your popcorn. Welcome back to the podcast. Whenever you're listening to this, whether it be live or a VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify, while you are waiting for the perfect opportunity to use Kraken from your own spawn, stating that Flounder Heights is the worst tri-color map to ever exist, Trying to figure out what exactly it is that Fizzy Bang adds to the game because I'm convinced it's nothing. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day 
to listen to this. Uh, unless I don't. Uh, if you thought I was going to come on here and talk about something Splat Safety related, because uh, Splat Safety sneezed last week, and that, of course, anytime Splat Safety does anything, it causes a little bit of stir amongst a handful of people in the community. Uh, no, I'm not. I don't really have anything to add that I haven't already said a gazillion times already in regards to Splat Safety. Uh, it, I, I'm, honestly, I'm kind of considering making just like a generic video uh, addressing some of the issues that people bring up every single time Splat Safety does anything as like, ah, ah, this, this is it. This is the mistake they made. Tear them down. Let's let they're corrupt. We need to get rid of them. Uh, but if you are a regular listener of the podcast, which I know you are, I would just be saying the same things I've been saying over and over again. There's nothing really I can add to the conversation. But just to be real brief, in case you're kind of curious and you forgot last time. Because some of the issues that you see people keep bringing up over and over again are the same exact thing. First off, how come the members of the Splat Safety Council are anonymous? I don't know who these people are. Okay. The reason they're anonymous is because they're not just dealing with people that are stealing lunch money from each other, all right? They're dealing with people that are known to dox people's addresses, names, and all their information. It's known to deal with people who are literal criminals in some instances. And in one particular case, they dealt with somebody who threatened a mass shooting event at a LAN. So, yeah. A little bit of reason there to re to keep a little bit of uh, uh, anonymousness when it comes to some of these wackos you're actually dealing with here. I wouldn't want my information out there either. I don't blame anybody for not wanting to be a part of that. Why do we even have splat safety? The TO should just be banning people themselves. Oh, if that is something you are very passionate about, then I've got some wonderful news for you. TOs have been banning people from their tournaments since before Splat Safety, while Splat Safety has a thing, and long after Splat Safety will be dead and gone. That is not a radical concept. That is something that has been going on since forever. So if you were very passionate that TOs should be doing that, rest easy. That is something that's been going on for a long time. Uh, how come it takes so long for these bands to come out? This was, uh, this was released several months ago. It takes them two, three months to figure this out. That is a concern. And it is something Splat Safety has addressed multiple times in, uh, their Twitter account, talking about how they're understaffed, the amount of workload that they have, the amount of thoroughness that needs to go through into the investigations of these things. A lot of the times when somebody's banned from Splat Safety, a lot of the orgs have already banned that person privately and have just been like, well, we're just going to wait for Splat Safe to do a more thorough investigation into these things before we kind of like jump in. Like, because we don't have the resources to do deep dives into things. And just because a twit longer comes out doesn't mean that's the end of the entire conversation. There's always more information to be brought up with stuff like that. That doesn't mean organizations don't do their own investigations thing. If somebody DMs me and says, hey, this is something you as the head TO of Low Inc or Proving Grounds or just somebody connected to IPL needs to be aware of. I'll share it with the rest of the team and we'll try to make a decision on like what we need to do with that. I'm sure other orgs operate the same exact way. But having an organization like Splat Safety who can do deeper dives into these things is extremely beneficial to us, but isn't something that is uh, like that, that just makes us say, okay, cool. We don't have to deal with this at all. No, we still deal with things like that. So yeah, you get a bunch of people that are constantly saying these same questions over and over and over again. And then when you give them the explanation to the question they're asking, it's not like they're responding with, oh, okay, thank you for giving me that, that answer I was looking for. No, they just don't respond to what you say, and they just continue beating the drum of everything Splat Safety does is bad. We need to just to get rid of this. So take that with a grain of salt next time something happens Splat Safety related, and you see the knee-jerk reaction that is anti-Splat Safety. I'm not saying that they are... Uh, above criticism. I've been pretty consistent on my stance about that with everything TO related. You should be holding splat safety to a high standard. You should be questioning the things that they do. And when they announce something and then follow it up an hour later with like, well, here's more context on this thing that we announced. My thought is like, why didn't you just 
do that initially. Like, if you're going to give more context, just give it right up front before the thing gets twisted out of control. But look at where the narrative is. Is somebody really asking for questions or are they just looking to create more fires? Are they just, just stoking fires and trying to get everybody to raise up their pitchforks? Because there's a clear, distinct difference between that. And you, the educated, the educated person who is listening to this podcast, you need to be able to decipher between who wants actual information and who's just a genuine jackass. You have to do that. And it's election year, so... Uh, at least in the States, you get to spend the whole year doing that and actually the rest of your life. It's a good skill to kind of pick up there. So there you go. I'm not saying anything about splat safety other than all of that. <sighs> News of tournaments may be of interest to the casual listener to the podcast. Nine Whole Grains is going to be hosting this Saturday the Golden <laughs> Graining Grounds, which is a Splatoon 3 tournament for teams that are made up of at least three players in their 30s and one player in their 20s. Um, you can do four players in their 30s if you want, but you don't really want that many people um, in their 30s playing one team. I, the last I checked this morning, this tournament caps at 32 teams, I believe, and I think there were only three spots available um, left to be filled out. It's on the Nintendo app. So this will be my... I am playing in it with um, uh, a team that Greg reached out to me and said, Hey, well, what if I put these players on a team with us? And uh, I said, yeah, I'd be open to playing with that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, if you... Uh, <laughs> I know a good chunk of my audience is eligible for this. And that's uh, that's that's great. So make sure you sign up for it if you want to. There's only a few spots remaining. Also, it is Low Ink Week. It is the last week of March, and this is the last time we can do a Low Ink in March. So we're gonna do it this time around. Low Ink preview for the podcast is gonna be out on Friday. That's gonna be at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time (EDT). I guess I gotta say for the next couple of months there. And yes. It is Easter weekend. I know it is Easter weekend. I get it. Why are the low ink TOs running a tournament over Easter weekend? When you are the head TO of low ink, you see things that make you question if there is a higher power or not. So just take that for what you will. Obviously, the low ink TOs are just horrible people like that. But hey, if you're not doing anything on Easter, playing low ink this weekend. <laughs> Today, we are going to be talking about the hot topic uh, that I was not expecting the kind of response when I put this topic up on Twitter today. Weapon and special bans. Are there something we need to be considering in the competitive Splatoon community and how my stance on this topic has changed dramatically since I woke up this morning and thought of it since then? All that and more. But first... As always, if you are a newerish person to the podcast and you want me to actually acknowledge what you say in chat, uh, you would want to leave a highlighted message. What I do, and this is just one. Oh wait, no, I'm not even getting to this yet. I'm out of order. Since we only got one major topic today, we are going to blaze through the weekly recap. So I guess we got to do that first. So the all that and more just so happens to be the weekly recap. Paddling pool number 259 took place last Wednesday. It was won by Corrupted Light. Now I'd win. Took second place in Hazard. Rounds out your top three. 28 teams played in Paddling Pool last Wednesday. All EU made the top three. Normally you see at least one American slip in here or there into the top three, or at least one of the teams. Because kiddos were not on spring break last week, which is weird because everyone around where I live is on spring break last week and this week. SOS took place last Friday as well. That was won by Nawal. I guess no longer Nawal Gaming. They just Nawal. Healthy Diet Food Groups took second place. And uh, 
fluid can. <laughs> this is the team that took home the bronze. This is the biggest SOS since Sindao, or since this tournament moved off of start.gg onto Sindao. What a weird year it's been from Battlefly to start.gg and finally onto its final home that will never go off away from is Sindao. Hammerhead was won by Sunset to make a bracket won by VC, uh, VR Cat. Almost said BCR Cat. And Lantern Bracket was won by Lost Inklings, who I'm assuming has won at least 20 Lantern Brackets so far at this point. <laughs> Triton Cup number 74 <laughs> was won by Fraudtella. In second place was Fruititella. And Squidding Good is the team that rounds out your top three into the bronze. I guess Frutella just got so tired of winning all of these tournaments that they moved on to uh, just making two teams to guarantee that one of them was going to lose. And of course, the team that came into uh, third place right there, Squidding Good. Isn't that the Wolling team, Squidding Good? I have to look into that. Did we ban those guys? I don't remember any of this thing. I have some stuff about CCA, but uh, I know their tournament started during the season, but I don't have any information to announce this week. Maybe some more information coming up next week with the CCA as their league is going on. And that was your weekly recap. Sponsored by... Falco's stupid, dumb March, Mad March Madness tournament for Splatoon players. It's stupid and dumb. Nobody cares. March Madness is a stupid idea for a tournament. Single elimination is dumb. They should have just made it a ladder tournament. Oakland cheated. That player should not be allowed to play 50 years in the college basketball and should not be allowed to drop 10 threes against Kentucky. We're done with college basketball. We are moving on to baseball. We do not care about Falco's stupid tournament. But since I did do like weekly updates of it last year, we'll at least make it the sponsor of today's segment of the weekly recap. <sighs> what are your thoughts on IPL and Dapples streaming the same exact matches for the last 3.5 hours of the HP for heroes tournament. They, I thought they were going to do like split stuff. I wasn't watching the stream. I was just like popping in and out. I didn't realize they were doing the same tournament or the same exact matches, but I had little to no uh, participation in, in TOing that event. So I couldn't really speak to that. Um, if you didn't ban Squid and Good, they'd absolutely destroy your permanent. My permanent? What? Nobody's destroying my permanent. That's not happening. I'm not bitter. I am getting on ESPN every other hour to see if Calipari got fired or not, but that's not related. So... I didn't do a podcast last week. Used it as a, my one week off for the month. But two charity tournaments have taken place in the Splatoon community the last two weekends. Last weekend, you had the HP for Heroes tournament, which was a two-day tournament hosted by Dapple Productions and IPL. And I can provide a little bit of transparency on this. Dapple Productions came to IPL with the idea of putting this together. And obviously, IPL, uh, IPL was all on board for it. And we've even looked, moved to Low Inc. Low Inc. was supposed to take place last weekend. Uh, but because of this HP for Heroes event, we decided to move Low Inc. up to this upcoming weekend. Um, and all worked out well. And it it's good that Dapple Productions and IPL can work well together. So let's, let's just kind of get this, uh, the elephant in the room here. Does Dapple Productions and IPL hate each other? Yes, yes, there's been a long-standing hatred between those two organizations. Why? Well, Dapples hates IPL because we took their girlfriend, and IPL hates Dapples because whenever she's with us, she does nothing but talk about them. So there's been this bad blood between those two organizations for a long time. So us coming together to make this event 
um, Dapple's approaching us to to uh, to get it kicked off was just a a good thing that worked out across the board, and hopefully is the sign of some cool stuff coming down the pipe um, between those two organizations. I think the more the Dapples and IPL work together, the more everybody on planet Earth benefits. Put their differences aside to host a joint tournament to raise money for gamers outreach. I believe the official total raise for the tournament was three thousand dollars, uh, three thousand fifty. Uh, feel free to quote me, quote me if I'm wrong. Um, but that's what I saw on the official Dapples account. I also saw something like thirty-five thousand dollars was raised for gamers outreach, but I'm assuming that's like a combination of like other tournaments that were going on or something, but. All around, a good chunk of change raised for a tournament and uh, for an organization through a Splatoon tournament, which is awesome. So that was last week. Two weeks ago, Prochara and the Super Chumps hosted another semi-tournament, semi-something else called Two Course Meal. This was a two-day event with day one being a side order speed run, I think it was, with some more uh, prominent people in the community. And day two was just a single standalone tournament. The tournament was very similar to the shopping spree tournament that you might recall from a couple of years ago that was uh, Spawn Point TV had. It was basically, you have $30, and here's all the weapons that are categorized into different tiers based on how good the weapon is and what the price would be. So you get to come up with a comp only spending the $30. The the and the most expensive weapons was pencil and uh splattershot nouveau for some reason, <laughs> the vanilla nouveau. Uh, I think that's some sort of joke. Um and then like the more meta weapons were like $10 and then it works its way down to like whatever they determine is the crappiest weapon is probably like for free or something, I don't know. But it is a concept that mixes things up a little bit, makes things a little bit more interesting. Now, I want to compare these two tournaments, the one that happened last weekend and the one that happened the weekend before. Not in the charities that they're going after. The uh, the uh, two-course event, uh, the two-course meal was a tournament that raised money for children of Palestine. Um, I don't know the exact dollar figure that they raised up, but I know it was a good... Uh, a good chunk of change. It was, it had a lot of people watching it, had a lot of people participating in it. Um, so I'm not like sitting here trying to debate like which charity was better or anything. That's not what I'm trying to compare. I'm trying to compare the actual tournaments itself because something clicked with me as I'm watching these two events. And it probably clicked with you too. The tournament that was hosted by Dapple Productions and IPL, the literal two biggest orgs in the community was not as anywhere near as exciting or well attended or well viewed as the tournament that was hosted by the pro chara conglomerate now there's like several factors that go into that like you got a much better casual audience uh whenever pro chara is doing something uh has a much better twitch channel you know there's there's a lot of different factors into that but i think the main the main draw at least for this tournament the difference between these two tournaments is the HP for Heroes tournament was the standard two day, no bit, nothing's no restrictions, just whatever the current meta is, that's what it is kind of tournament. And the Prochara two course meal tournament was something that's mixed it up, added a little bit of spice. You couldn't just uh, Zuka spam and pencil your way through a victory. You couldn't afford it. That made things a little bit more interesting. Whenever tournaments like this pop up, we usually classify them as something that's... Uh, I've used the word gimmick tournament before, and I don't mean gimmick in the sense uh, as like a derogatory term towards that tournament. It's just a off-meta tournament. It's, it's a gimmick. It's a tournament that you shouldn't consider into results. You shouldn't be going into your Sindao bios and say, I beat this team in this tournament under a ton of these funky different rule sets. I shouldn't be using this as a justification that I can uh, should be banned from low ink because I'm now a plus four warrior since it's in my Twitter bio. That's not what we're looking at when we talk about these kinds of things. However, 
and we especially think about this whenever beta runs one of their events, uh, which has usually been like a, a let's mix, let's, let's add some like specialized rules. Not that we think this is the rules that should be in play for the community going forward, but just things that would make this tournament interesting for one day. Uh, Idol is the name of that tournament, which I always forget how it's pronounced. So I think I got it right, right there. Whenever these tournaments go on, these gimmick tournaments, and a lot of people play in them and they watch them and they enjoy it. We always just like to dream, right? Just have a little bit of a vision. What if every tournament was like this? Would it be good? Would it be bad? Would we get bored of it pretty quickly? I don't know. But it does raise a question that I've been thinking about for a while. Whenever these tournaments pop up, I usually do a little bit of a segment here on the podcast where I talk about why we don't do weapon bans, why we don't have a universal rule set of uh, like brawl where we're getting rid of Meta Knight. No, we're not. We're not banning anything. We're not. We're not changing anything. We're not going to step in to this community and mix things up. We're just going to do what the game allows us. We're going to ban certain maps because, well, and you know, we thought we got rid of Flounder Heights, but now it's back. <laughs> so Proving Grounds had a Flounder Heights Rainmaker game going on in it. A sign of the times for sure. But I always come on here and say we're never going to be doing these weapon bans. Or maybe not never do the weapon bans, but I've always been against it. My main reason for being against it is because it is a Pandora's box. Once you open it up, you can't close it again. Once you start banning something, then you're going to be, well, now we got to ban the next thing or something else comes out. Well, you guys banned this. Does that mean you're going to ban that? And are you going to start unbanning this thing? You give a mouse a cookie. All of a sudden, the, the mouse is like, okay, can you ban Reslider in Mako Mart? That'd be pretty cool. I've gone into much more in depth about that before in the past, that, that particular topic. I'm not going to waste a lot of time going back into it again. That is the TLDR, but just know that is not the, the, that one statement is not like the end all of my thoughts on, uh, the whole Pandora's box argument. I always said the game is new. You should wait. The patches might come out and, you know, the patches might not fix something, but they might create something new that would make you want to do something else. Like Crab, I don't think ever really got nerfed. I think they just came up with better ways to fight it to where Crab got obsolete. They didn't really fix Crab. They just created, some, they turned to something they didn't truly understand and just unleashed the Joker onto the streets of Gotham in the form of the Zuka. However, when it comes to patches that have come out with this game, they have not been game changing and they've never met the expectations the competitive Splatoon scene has been asking for. Why? Because the Nintendo doesn't really care about the competitive Splatoon scene because they're not going to make you guys, we're not going to make them any money. We are the, of all the people that bought, that have bought a copy of Splatoon 3, the amount that know slash care about competitive side of this game is in the 0.001 percentile. It's not very big. So there are more people that are excited when Aerospray gets buffed in a patch than there are that are upset and angry that Zuka didn't get touched or that Cooler is now the counter to respawn punisher or that pencil is still the most broken thing in all time in the world that we live in it's hard for us to understand that and i get that because your feed is constantly filled with other people that are in the same boat as you and when that casual slips in their way into your timeline and they're complaining about getting squid bagging or or Splatfest being unfair to them. You guys are so sensitive and so insecure about your own feelings that you all dogpile onto that one person who is making kind of like understandable arguments, but also at the same time, you could just tell them politely, hey, Nintendo put me in your lobby. I didn't ask for that. But, uh, but no, that's the world we live in. And that's what we're kind of used to being about. 
when it comes to competitive Splatoon things, but you got to start thinking outside of the box when it comes to these patches that are coming to this, where they're not catered to or to us because we, well, don't really affect the bottom line that much if we're being dead honest with that. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing or that you shouldn't be upset when the patches suck, but if you look at the history of the last several patches, most people in competitive Splatoon scene have been saying, well, this is the worst patch ever. Then the next one comes out. Oh, this is the worst patch ever. The patches haven't been addressing the issues that we as competitive Splatoon players have been having with this game. Well, we're playing in private battles where we control what our comps are as opposed to this going into solo queue. And if you're a, a Splatling player, oops, here's a Charger player on your team. What am I supposed to do with that? We're both literally elbowing each other for the same spots the entire game. Fun times. But that's the world we live in. And yes, weapons still, um, there's still weapons to come. Like we're not done. We know there's at least a handful of weapons that still need to get their second kit. However, as much as I would like to see this happen, I'm pretty convinced that custom Hydra isn't going to flip the competitive Splatoon scene on its head when that thing comes out. Maybe maybe the uh, custom Blaster or Grim Blaster will be nice, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not really holding my breath that there's some sort of miracle kit that's going to come out and break everything apart. Not really sure that's going to happen right there. It would be nice to see, though. In my opinion, knowing that no meta has ever been liked and if you're gonna sit here and tell me well the meta we all loved when the meta was this or that you're lying out of your ass as usual because the meta is designed by definition to be something you hate because it is the easy way to win as uh, as people like to think about it even with that in context it's not that things have become stale it's the acknowledgement that things have been stale in the competitive meta for an extended period of time. There's no help coming from the patches. There's no help coming from weapons that have yet to be named. And if you think there are, as I've been hoping for for the past year or so, at some point you got to wake up and realize it's not going to happen. And while I think it's totally fair to have that mindset, and it's a mindset I've had at the start of the game, when we haven't even had a single second kit come out, I think it's fair to say at this point, with the vast majority of the weapons that have already come out, the patches we've been getting, that you can look at this and say, we're going to be stuck at where we are for a while now. I hope that's not the case, but there's not much information to leave you to believe otherwise that that is going to be the case. So, the conversation that I am proposing today is that we, the competitive Splatoon community, could make our own patches. There's nothing stopping us from deciding if something's broken that you can't use it. There's nothing stopping us from deciding that when somebody goes on and says Splatoon 2 is better than Splatoon 3... We just look at that and say, okay, what are you really trying to say? Because we know you hated Splatoon 2 at the end of it. You realize missiles were firing nonstop at Splatoon 2, and they didn't get nerfed in Splatoon 2. They got nerfed a little bit into Splatoon 3. But in Splatoon 2, you can fire missiles, start charging your next ones before they land, and when they land, that is going to count towards you building up your next set of missiles. That is what Splatoon 2 was. I'm not even going to talk about armor and Stingray, because Stingray wasn't that bad it wasn't as bad as what it was towards the end of that life cycle but if you're going to tell me splatoon 2 is the better competitive game than splatoon 3 what if i were to tell you well what if we just take this one thing out of splatoon 3 or we change this one thing in splatoon 3 what is your opinion on the game then as a whole from a casual perspective it might not change but from a competitive perspective it might be completely different. It might just be a one or two thing kind of thing that will make you start to say, okay, this is better than Splatoon 3. And I've said on record a couple times here on the podcast 
that I, while I've had this stance of we shouldn't be banning things because once we start banning them, we can't go back. I have said and continue to say this. I regret not having a different stance about this towards the end of the life cycle of Splatoon 2. We should have jumped in at the end of Splatoon 2 when we knew the game was done. There's not going to be any patches, and if we do, it's just something slapped onto a... a well, no, there weren't even any more Splatfests to be given out at that time. I should have been more vocal about, we need to do something about these missiles, about, like, special charge, about, like, special spam in general. And we didn't, and we let that game just kind of ride off. And now I'm trying to get into a mindset, well, not trying to, I am in this mindset of, I want to prevent that from happening this time around. And I think the acknowledgement needs to come is that it's already happening. Things are already getting stale and set into its ways. And this would be a great time to step in and inject some life into the community and say, we're going to get a handle of this the way we want the game to be played, not the way the game could be played without any kind of restrictions, because we see that is a uh, rather boring. Now, I'm going to hit you with a butt. I'm going to hit you with a big old fat old butt. If you're going to start banning things, there's a lot of things you really need to consider. I got three major things you need to start considering here before, well, over the course of this topic. Number one, what is it specifically that you want banned that is going to fix this community? And that's not a, that, uh, that's, that's a rhetorical question. Don't go, I mean, you can go and chat and be like, well, I think this and that and all that stuff. But what you're going to find is everyone's got a bunch of different answers for the most part. In my opinion, if you're going to make massive changes to the community, the less changes you make will have more impact. You don't want to really start overthinking this. You don't want to be super technical. You do not want to limit the gear and abilities that people are wearing. Do you really want people, when they're playing their opponent, to just stop and look at all the abilities their opponent is wearing and be like, oh, oh, they got one sub too many of special charge up. That's against the rules. I'm going to report them. You guys are the most ridiculous people complaining about this term rule booking, which isn't an actual term. It is literally you cheated and you got caught. And for some reason, you're mad at the person who pointed out that you're cheating instead of yourself for pe cheating. But how silly would it be if you were to lose this set because we are starting to micromanage the amount of sub charge up that you guys are wearing like that. You don't need the touch abilities in my opinion. So you don't want to get too technical with this and you don't really want to overthink it and understand that no ban will be universally agreed on. There's not going to be a hundred percent. Yes. We all can acknowledge that this is something we need to get rid of. I think there are some key things that are pretty vast majority kind of agreed upon though, right? Kraken and clam blitz, uh, limiting ink Zuka in some way, pencil. I like th those things seem kind of, I think most people would agree that those need to be touched in some way. I don't, don't know what that word means. I'm just going to deny it. Um, now what about more open-ended things? Like, do, do you want to ban uh, do you want to ban re-slider in splat zones? You might get some people that are like, yeah, I'm totally on board with that. You need to ban that uh, like months ago. And you're going to get some people that are probably going to be a little bit more resistant. Like th that might be a more of a 50, 50 split, uh, banning squeezer. The real issue with squeezer, at least from my understanding is the people that are like, um, well, it, you the turbo controller thing and you can use squeezer and fire the turbo controller if you're wondering why there is no rule in an online tournament about what controller you can use it's because i have no way in hell of knowing what controller you guys are going to use and people have sent us clips before of like oh this person i think they're aimbotting or i think this person's using a turbo controller but I'm like am i really going to sit here and, and pull up a clip and just like frame by frame, like count the number of bullets coming out of a squeezer. Like it's, it's almost impossible to determine that. And between you, me, you and me, 
I like this game. I care about this community. I don't care about it that much to to really look at a clip to try to determine what controller you guys are using. So would the alternative be to just ban Squeezer then? Well, I think you're going to get a lot of people are going to be like, no, do not ban Squeezer with that. But you're still probably going to have a good chunk of people that are, are going to be on board with that. There's a lot of different things that you could get into here. Do you want to ban um, copying of weapons? Like you can't use two weapons. You can't have the two splash o -matics. Remember the game first started? Three splash o in a machine. Would you say you can't have more than one, uh, one weapon? Like you could do two splashes, but one has to be vanilla. One has to be Neo. There's a lot of different ways that you could go here. And there's no way to really make sure. Well, there is a way to make sure. But there's no way to make everybody happy and maybe everybody on board with what kind of bands you're going to be going with here. Now, if you make a ban, you got to be open to unbanning things as well if things get fixed, especially since patches are still a thing. I am on favor of banning clam, uh, Kraken and Clam Blitz. But if they were to come out with a patch that said you can no longer jump to where the Kraken currently is, you can only jump to where it like took off like the uh, the inkjet. Somebody mentioned that on Twitter. At that point, maybe you do let Kraken back into Clam Blitz, so you can't really do that specific cheese. you got to be open to these kinds of things. And keep in mind, some of the things we're talking about banning aren't even issues that were a part of the game a year ago. If, a year ago, you would have been talking about, they need to do something about crab. We need to do something about all these splash matics like, They need to do something about machine. Well, here we are a year later, and none of those things are relevant anymore at all. They're still really good, but they're not the things we're even talking about anymore. So, like, the game still does change. Are you open to being dynamic with the changes that you're doing as far as banning things are concerned? But let's let's just consider we come to a consensus list and I'll give you my personal list later on in this uh, in this topic. But let's say you do come to a consensus list. Here's the second thing you got to keep in mind. The first is what are you banning? The second is how are you going to make the change? And here's how change is going to happen. Change has to come from the top down. It can't come from low level. You can't change something in low ink and then force it to be changed uh, elsewhere. Uh, it has to come from the top level of the competitive platoon and everything else reacting to that once we see that it is the, uh, the appropriate way to go. And it has to be universal. I saw a comment today that was, that basically said low ink should never change. Low ink should never be banning anything. And I've on record of saying this uh, several episodes ago, and I'll, I'll reiterate it here again. If there was a weapons ban or special ban on open tournaments, and most of them or the, the most significant ones got on board with that, Low Ink would do that. I would push for that change to happen in Low Ink as well. You have to do that. The point of Low Ink is to prepare teams for the next step. Uh, to graduate from low ink so that you can disband and stop playing this video game and become a TO. Uh, but if we were to play low ink with different rule sets than what you would have once you are done with low ink, it makes you can't do that. You're you're hold you're hindering the teams that are playing in your tournament. You're not preparing them for the next step. You're just preparing them to get through low ink. And if, if a rule is, is up there, you have to match the rules. We try to cater our map list to be that. And, th and that's something I, I took over when I became a head to you for, uh, for low ink. We got rid of the Moray Towers. We got rid of the Kelp Domes. The, the Oh, you need to play these maps because they're going to help you get better. Yeah, but what's the point when you don't play those maps at all and everybody else is playing Tower Control, Art Academy, and uh, Mako Mart Zones and you're not prepared for it because you've been playing... Uh, port mackerel the entire time throughout the course of low ink and yes I know you guys complain about the low ink map pool don't worry every tournament you're going to play and you're going to play about the map pool and things have only gotten worse since then so that's where the changes come from they need to be open tournaments and low level reacting to that but it has to be universal as well. You can't have Dapple Productions banning Zuka and IPL banning Pencil. Like, everybody has to be on the same page as far as what we're banning. Otherwise, things become too segregated, too, uh, too dis dis desynced from each other, and no uniformity. And for the longest time, I thought 
that that was going to be the issue why you would never see weapon changes or or like universal bans because you can't get everybody to agree uh, on anything in this scene. But what changed my mind about that recently is how everything has just naturally transitioned over to Sindow.inc. Regardless of what you think about tournaments and scrims dying off and, and people practicing on Sindow for tournaments and, and oh, I got to take everything seriously anymore, which is a topic for another day. At the beginning, it was just a handful of tournaments and dapples that went over to Sindow. I saw that with Proving Grounds and I was like, let's go over there too. And it was like, whoa, this is great. And I sang the praises of it. And now we're starting to see more IPL events go over there. Uh, just recently, I saw All for One level up from the Ink Up, make the transition over to Sindow.ink. So that's an example of, and all that's taking place because players are responding to it. When players start flooding a tournament that they don't normally play in, other TOs see that and we start to see, okay, well, why, what, what is it about that tournament that makes it more interesting or more appealing to the players? TOs respond to those kinds of things. And that's why you're starting to see more and more things switch over to Sindow.inc because it has been a positive impact on tournaments in general. And the players have shot out and sprung to that. So I think if you make a tournament that has a weapon ban or a special ban of some sort and it gets a better influx, influx of players and you start to see more of the high level players start to come and play in it you're going to see other TOs and other tournaments start to react to that so maybe my thought of well nothing's ever going to be universal maybe there is some not truth to that and maybe there is in reality a world where we do have more uh, uniformity as far as our rule sets are concerned from tournament to tournament. It's another thing you need to think of. Now, Low Inc. going to transition over to Sindow.inc. We're one of the last tournaments to do it. Uh, maybe that's a conversation for Friday. I would love to see it happen someday, but there are uh, a lot of hurdles. Low Inc. is a different kind of animal there to make that happen. But that's another thing that you need to consider here. And number three. First, I said you need to establish what it is that you're banning. You need to find a way how you implement what you're banning. Now, number three is the understanding that even though you are going to ban something and have a plan to do it, there's still a couple of things you can never, ever touch. We can change things in the West scene. We can't change how things are operated in Japan. And you can't change how our overlords at Nintendo run their tournament either. How weird is it going to be when you guys start playing in an overlord tournament and we've banned Pencil and we've banned Zuka, and then all of a sudden you're watching a uh, Jordan Kent commentating Crush Soda versus Starburst and it's Pencil versus Pencil with three Zuka players in between it. It's going to be such a, a shock seeing that considering that we have changed something else. But Nintendo's not going to go in line with what our community guidelines are as far as rules are concerned. They don't know how to run good tournaments. Hell, they're kind of more progressive than we are in this topic. They've banned the Splatfest T, and that does absolutely nothing. But they've been on board with banning certain things from b before, even if they were kind of dumb ideas and they didn't have any purpose behind them. Japan is a completely different animal. Now... There is some connection with Japan, and, and there's been more crossover with Japan than what there's ever been before in the past. Um, between players and TOs, uh, it, there's just been more, more connection. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the changes you're going to see in the West is something that's going to be implemented in the next, uh, the next Splat Area Cup championships that are going to be held. Like it, and I'm not really concerned about like, oh, well, this is going to hinder jackpot because when they go over and play someone else, they got to uh, adapt a play style. Like I'm pretty sure they can adapt and they can get the scrims that they'll need for something like that. But that is something we don't really have a control over. Now, I think if we did make a universal rule set that made sense and Japan saw it, I think you could seize them take it and try to implement it into the tournaments that they do. I, I do genuinely think that is something that could take place, but it's not something that you have control over and you can never 100% be 
make the community every single tournament that you play in fall in line with any kind of rule set. <sighs> However, with all of those things stated, here is what I'm here is what I am observing about the video game right now. I'm just going to I'm just going to be blunt with you guys. This is like my genuine genuine thoughts as as I am watching this as I'm TO in advance as I'm commentating it as I'm uh, just like observing Twitch uh, like send out events and stuff like that and, and uh, it's just just everything I'm I'm absorbing just by looking at this game right now. I genuinely don't think pencil players are even playing the video game anymore. Like I, I don't, I, I, I see it as I see V jet in Splatoon two. I'm a stand here and paint fire missiles, paint and fire more missiles. And I'm not sitting here saying that pencil players are bad at the video game because they're not. That's just the optimal way to play the video game. And it just doesn't seem like they're actually doing what Splatoon is about. And I bet if you asked any pencil player or any player who's being forced to play pencil right now, they would probably agree with that same exact sentiment. Uh, for commentators, and I'm mainly talking about myself here, but I, it's it's something that's always made me cringe. You can't get excited about Azuka kill anymore. Like if 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 a player gets a double with Azuka, that's not really something that's super exciting or impressive anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. Like you're kind of in the mindset of when a player gets a double to just like, Oh, Hey, this is a, this could be, this could turn into something. This could be the play of the game. Let's give it a little bit of hype and energy. But in reality, it's a player just winning the RNG of the Zuka and getting a nice triple. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Okay, they they got a wipe, and now they got to now they can start pushing the objective because the Zuka worked that time around. Uh, crack and cheese is bad. It it's bad. It, it's really bad, uh, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, Keon and I were commentating improving grounds, and there were several teams that tried the crack and cheese and lost because of the crack and cheese. Like they just weren't good at it or they waited too long to build up the right amount of clams to hold on to the Kraken. And then the Kraken died before they could get all the clams together. Like they were too passive because of it and they lost, but the teams that are getting better at it and really starting to understand it and are just good at the game in general, they're making clam blitz bad, <laughs> like really bad. And, uh, again, it's only going to get worse. The more teams practice that particular strategy and, uh, yeah, I, I'm not for it. So those are just my thoughts of, of, of just general things I've been observing just from watching the game. It just, a lot of the things you used to be excited about just kind of suck <laughs> right now. And I'm not even playing the game. I, I couldn't even imagine what it's like to actually play in some of these instances like that. So here is my thoughts on what we could ban today if we wanted to. Now, I'm not sitting here saying Neon Whale, which is going to kick off in about an hour, should start implementing these things right away. Or And we're not going to change anything with Low Ink this upcoming weekend. I haven't even talked to anybody within IPL about any of this stuff, so I'm not going to uh, like, like insinuate that this is what the community is going to change. I just want to start the conversation and I want to throw out there my ideas for what I think we could do. And the point I say we could do it today is that there's really nothing stopping us. Like there, Nintendo's not going to step in and tell us what we have to do. And there's nobody that if, if we make a rule and the players don't like it, they're just not going to sign up for the tournament. And then you just make the, you change the rule and then they'll come back and sign up for it. Like there's nothing preventing us from trying to at least attempt to address this issue. Here's what I suggest we do. And this is a dynamic conversation. These things can change. A patch could come out tomorrow and address all these things. But today, if I were to make changes, here's the three things I would change. First off, I would ban Kraken from Clan Blitz straight up. 
I don't think you would find many teams that use the Kraken cheese that would disagree with it. No, please let us keep this Kraken. This is so much fun. No, I think most people would universally be on board if Kraken just got put on the shelf whenever you play Clan Blitz specifically. For Zuka, I, I thought back and forth about how the best to address it. I guess the initial idea would be, well, just say you can only use one Zuka weapon. But then I tried to think about it a little bit of a step further. Well, what if you just had a rule that said you can't use a special more than once? But then is it like, are you really going to be tripping if somebody uses heavy and range blaster and you got two wave breakers uh, that are being used? Like, no. So, like, why would you ban that? And then I thought back to what I said earlier. Don't overthink these things. Don't try to make them cute, too cute or too complicated. The issue is Zuka. Just make a rule that says you can only have one Zuka weapon in your comp at a time and no more than that. Number three, pencil is getting axed. Ban the damn thing. Pencil is not Splatoon. It's not. Just sitting around, boom, 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 boom. Painting the ground. Here's some soda. Go get me some assists. I'm not going to die unless Azuka kills me. I'm going to rack up a 20 KA, and out of those 20 KA, 19 of them are going to be assists. That is not Splatoon. That is not playing a video game. Pencil is not something I would uh, would is not something I would support. It needs to be banned. Vanilla pencil. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shads. The vanilla pencil. If you want to, uh, you want to use the red one. You just want to throw rain all day long. You do you. At least you're not going to keep your teammates uh, in the game 24-7 without any consequences to that. Banning the vanilla pencil. And that is it. That is it. Nothing more. Nothing more than that. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to add too many rules. You don't want to make things too complicated. You just want to do those three things. Ban clam, uh, Kraken on Clam Blitz, one Zuka in your comp, and get rid of Pencil. And that's it. If you want to go way beyond that, you're going to start creeping even closer into unintended consequences category. Keep in mind, the teams at the top are going to find whatever they have to do to win. If this was about finding fun, creative things, we'd have seen a lot of different weapons at the top right now. But the game started off with nothing but Splash and Machine. Not because, uh, not because that we couldn't find other things that worked. It's because that was the best thing that worked. So people that didn't even use Splash before, they're going to figure out how to use it now because that is what's going to help them win. The more rules changes you make, the more your or any rule change you make, eventually you are going to come up with something new. There's going to be some Frankensteining going on that's going to create this new kind of meta that people aren't going to like. But it will at least be something different. It will be changing. It'll be dynamic. And that's what we're kind of looking for here. You don't want to add anything else. If you guys want to ban Reslider for Splat Zones, don't do it. Do not do it. Because there's probably some unintended consequence you're not thinking about here. You guys want to ban Squeezer to since we can't do anything about Turbo Controllers? Don't do it. Because, well, what if I use a turbo controller on a brush or some other mashing weapon? Unintended consequences you don't really want to be dealing with right here that we can't really perceive. And keep in mind, a lot of th those three changes I implemented or that I I'm suggesting, go back a year and tell somebody that we're banning clam uh, Kraken from Clam Blitz. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? You guys are banning pencil? Pencil sucks. Nobody uses soda. You guys are banning Zuka. Zuka doesn't do anything. Everybody's using crab right now. So like a year from now, we might not even be talking about Kraken or Zuka or the pencil because there could be a patch that fixes all of it. But my point today is this. No longer can we sit around and wait for the someday. Someday this might get fixed. Someday this meta might change. Someday something could come in. We got to say goodbye to someday and start taking control of our community. That is the thought I had from watching the, uh, the tournament from two weekends ago. 
Unintended consequences to this? 100% yes. 100% yes. But the only way we're going to know is if we try it. And what do we have to lose to try it at this point? A Pandora's box? Yes. But I'm starting to realize, what's the point of going through life if you're not going to at least peek into the box and see what's inside? Why not have a little peek? And as usual, I talked for too long and a lot of the stuff that got highlighted got mixed. Maybe it didn't. Prochar, we'll start with this. My issue is people don't talk about what they actually want out of the meta or game and what they should be good and restriction attorneys will only work well centered around that is uh, what we want people to do. Yeah, um, and I, that's part of the reason why I'm kind of doing this topic is I want to I want to start that conversation. I feel like there are people that do talk about that. Uh, I feel like things get drowned out, but I think that's the point of why I want to do this topic today to at least initiate the conversation um, from a TO's perspective. Um, and of course, that was a little while ago, so maybe I covered something like that. The seasonal system just doesn't work for Splatoon. With the new patch sucks, we get great another three months of the same meta, where Splatoon 2, we got patches every month, so it felt far far less daunting. Uh, there were a lot of different metas in Splatoon 2, but you also got to keep in mind that people didn't like those metas either, but yeah, I feel like they were shorter. I think that's the point that you're getting at. They, they felt like they were shorter. Whereas it's like, man, three. Yeah. I feel like we've been stuck in this like cooler Zuka meta for a long time. Somebody did a timeline. Um, Gus, but pop gun, <laughs> but pop gun who will make these ban restrictions and why, how dare the Splatoon government tell me what I could do and cannot do. I can do it on proving grounds. I mean, like, I would I would talk to Toasty and Wolf, but, like, what's stopping us from doing it in the next Proving Grounds? Like, those three things I just mentioned, would any of you not play in Proving Grounds if you could only use one Zooka? We banned Kraken and banned Prentzel, uh, banned Kraken for Clan Blitz, or would more people play in it? Like, uh, like, nothing's stopping me from doing that. Like, nobody, like, nobody, <laughs> like, like, why not? Why not give it a shot? And if it works... Other tournaments would catch on and do the same thing. And if it didn't work, we'd just not do it again the next month. Just like a scrim, except tournament side. Uh, pro chart, I'd ban the same stuff plus charge up. Okay, the, the charge up is... That uh, abilities is something I see is, is... It's not difficult to enforce, but it's... Um, I, d I just don't want to step in with abilities. I, I just don't want to touch abilities at this time. I, it goes back to my less is more. Um, and really, like, I'm just talking about two things, just like Zooka and Pencil mainly. Like, the clam the Kraken Clam Blitz thing is something Nintendo needs to address on their own. Um, surprise they haven't at this point. But I, I feel like Charge Up would be a step too far initially as far as, like, just, just shaking things up. Like, just limiting Zooka and Pencil by itself is a huge thing. Um, when you say pencil, do you mean the red pencil? Yeah. Uh, just the, just banning the vanilla one is my takes on that. Gus, the reason why I assume pop gun wouldn't ban special charge up is not problematic for all weapons. That's another point. I didn't really think about. Um, yeah. Do I, again, do I care if like a, a blaster, I, like a blaster player, if it got inkjet, and while well, it takes forever to build up a special with a blaster and ink jets like a good special or, 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 or whatever. Yeah. Like charge up to help like mitigate that kind of issue again. Well, that to, to your point, Gus, and the points I've been bringing of unintended consequences, that's not something I thought about until just now. The, um, the things you don't think about, like, and that's why you don't want to do massive things. Just a couple of things that you know are going to have an impact and see. So that's, uh, again, dynamic conversation. Sam237. Nah, I've been saying ban crack. Yes, I know you have. <laughs> I know you have, Sam. And uh, I'm sorry, okay? You can clip this. I was wrong. Initially, I was like, look, guys, it's just baller. We dealt with baller. Uh, I will give you credit, Sam. You and the idiots, uh, the imbeciles, 
were one of the first ones to point it out. And uh, who knew that uh, the imbeciles um, secret elixir rivalry was going to ring true to uh, to so many different things going forward a year later. So, all right, I'll, I'll give you that one. Keon, how am I supposed to be excited about the video game? Uh, Splatfest was last weekend. You missed it. Uh, Lexi underscore Spool, is there anything specific that happened that made you want to talk about banning special slash weapons today? It's, you know, uh, just some conversations on Twitter. I saw I saw Zenith talk about, like, a, a match they played against where, like, the Clan Blitz thing where their opponent just didn't leave spawn. Um, Zero and several people talking about how Splatoon 2 was better than Splatoon 3 just made me think, well what if we just changed one thing in Splatoon 3? Would you still feel the same way? Um, because I think, uh, like, just as far as, like, game to game, I feel like Splatoon 3 is better. I'm not going to change anyone's opinion or be like, well, how dare you think Splatoon 2 is better? Um, but just just that got me in the mindset of, like, well, how could we make Splatoon 3 better? And it was just like, well, wait a minute. We can. We could absolutely do that. That's it. All right, cool. <laughs> Pop Gun has forgotten about Rapid Deco. I don't play the game anymore. Like I know Japan does it. Is it hard to build up uh, Inkjet with uh, Rapid Deco? Or does that thing paint well enough to where you can get it without special charge? I don't know. I don't know these things. <laughs> that does it for today's episode of the Popcast. Uh, keep the conversation going. Uh, it's 210. So it's not feasible to farm. Okay, well, yeah. Throw some charge up on that thing. I like seeing ink jets. And that's also why I don't want to, like, ban you can't have more than one special. Just because I like watching people play ink jet. And uh, it feels like a weapon. It's, it's a special that's fun to watch. And when you get good with that, it, it feels kind of rewarding. It feels earned. That's a good word. Earned. And that's going to do it for today's episode of the Popcast. Let's go to Jared. If you'd like to be a part of the Popcast anyway, feel free to reach out my socials below Twitter uh, at uh, Mr. Underscore Popgun. Discord at Popgun. Twitch at Popgun25. Whatever. Whoever. Don't matter. Um... Low Ink Preview, Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Sign up for Low Ink. We'll see you guys then. Good chat today.